We interrupt this website to make a special announcement. My name is Victor Tiffany with Revolt Against Plutocracy, an organization dedicated to the legalization of democratic order in the United States by the equalization of campaign donations among all citizens through comprehensive campaign finance reform. The following information is not something you're going to hear on CNN or MSNBC. You're not going to read it in the New York Times or the Washington Post, especially not in the Washington Post. There are six categories of voters, maybe seven, but at least six categories of voters who will not support a Democratic Party nominee unless his name is Bernie Sanders. So there are four rough categories of Bernie or Busters. We'll start with the smallest one. The Democratic Socialists of America passed a weak T resolution indicating they will not endorse any other nominee besides Bernie Sanders. So I can't imagine any more than a few thousand of them would actually vote for Green Party candidate or a Socialist Party candidate if the nominee ends up being Clinton associate Elizabeth Warren. But then there's the actual Bernie or Busters from Revolt Against Plutocracy's voter pledge. There are currently 48,000 of us. We hope to be 100,000 by the time the primaries start in 2020. Last time, we came just about 9.6 thousand votes shy in Pennsylvania from claiming responsibility for the defeat of Hillary Clinton. That was without a DSA resolution or any of these other things, these other Bernie or Bust elements that I'm going to describe. We came close last time, and we're growing, we're far more advanced this time, we're far better organized this time, we're not repeating our mistakes this time. So bigger than Bernie or Busters are Bernie or Trumpers, swing voters who wanted change last time. So they wanted Bernie Sanders, but when he didn't get the nomination, they went with Trump. There's more of them than there are Bernie or Busters. They're not Bernie or Busters, they're Bernie or Trumpers. And then the largest segment of this of these four are the so called Bernie or Bust generation. These are first time voters, or maybe second time voters if they voted in the uh, midterms. But the, there are pockets of these young people who know that Bernie Sanders was robbed last time by a rigged system. And those who might be shaking your head, no, it wasn't rigged, need to read the article in Politico by Donna Brazile when she explained that the Clinton campaign financed the DNC, controlled the DNC, controlled the hiring, firing, and messaging of the DNC. You don't lose a primary when you control the National Committee. The system was rigged, at least at that level, if not others, last time. And these young people remember this. So our estimate is that there's something between uh, 220,000 and maybe a million of these young people. There's no polling that's been done at this point of them. Now add up those four groups of Bernie or Busters, and you don't come close to the size of the next two categories, brought to our attention by French political economist Thomas Piketty, who published an essay in 2020, a study showing the results of voter habits over 70 years in the United States, France, and England. And he concluded that poor people and poorly educated people will not come out and vote for anybody unless there is a social democrat on the ballot, or in this case, democratic socialist. Those are equivalent terms. Bernie's not a Marxist, he's not a socialist of the Cuba, North Korea, Soviet Union sort of socialist. He's more like Denmark. He's a democratic socialist. And these poor people will come out and support somebody who, with an agenda of higher minimum wage and, and Medicare for all or, or free college so they can improve their lot in life. But they'll stay home if there's someone like Elizabeth Warren on the ballot or Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or any of these other Democrats. They want somebody who speaks to their needs, and they won't vote otherwise. So that's part of Bernie's winning coalition. There's also the blue no matter who Democrats, if they're honest about that, 
they will support Bernie Sanders against Donald Trump. And that leaves independent voters, the people who are questionable. Will they support a democratic socialist? Or will they turn around and support a neo-fascist in the president? Polling indicates Bernie beats Trump now. So clearly some of these people will prefer Trump, will, will support, uh, prefer Bernie Sanders over Trump. These are people who are concerned about climate change. You, Trump is reelected, his climate is doomed. We are doomed as a species if Trump is reelected. Or Joe Biden gets elected, because he's not much better than Trump, and in some ways he's worse than Trump. Only Bernie can defeat Trump, barring, barring a uh, collapse of the stock market or recession by other means, two quarters in a row of decline in the GD, GMP. So if these independents, and there's probably three categories, some that probably consider Bernie the lesser of two evils. Evil, of course, is in the eye of the beholder, to coarsely summarize an entire book by Frederick Nietzsche. And some who will vote for Trump, hold their nose and vote for Trump, hold their nose and vote for Bernie. And then there's others, according to polling, or no, data, coming from the 2016 election. There were 1.7 people who voted in 2016, but left the line for president on the ballot blank. In other words, Bernie's winning coalition doesn't have to be a majority. It just needs to be bigger than Trump's right-wing racist coalition. So, given the four categories, or the six categories of voters who won't back any other Democrat, if you want a candidate with long coattails, Bernie's your guy. Bernie's the candidate who can turn the Senate blue. He's the only one who can turn the Senate blue. Other Democrats might be able to defeat Trump, but Bernie's the one who could transform this country into a progressive order again. And we've got to have that because that's what it's going to take to solve the climate emergency. Thank you for your attention. I appreciate your time.